This video is brought to you by NordVPN. For an exclusive deal, check the link in the description. It helps you, and it helps us. The Late Jurassic Period, a time when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. The period ushered in warm climates, lush jungles, and a plethora of new life being called home by some of the most famous dinosaurs we all love to learn about. The carnivorous Allosaurus, the plated Chunkingosaurus, and of course, possibly the most famous dinosaur to roam the vast landscapes of the Jurassic Period was the Thunder Lizard, the Brontosaurus. The Brontosaurus, or Bronto for short, was a massive sauropod characterized by its large neck, staggering height, and giant feet that would shake the ground when it walked, hence the name Thunder Lizard. This enormous reptile is iconic for its inclusion in media for over 100 years. Since its discovery, it has featured in movies, TV, and everything in between. It has carved itself out amongst many other dinos, and its lasting legacy of being this icon of prehistory is something that is more complicated than most people think. What if I told you the legendary thunder lizard, the Brontosaurus, never even existed at all? It's time to uncover a mystery hundreds of millions of years old. A video 150 million years in the making. And trust me, we spared no expense. It's time to dig up some dinosaurs. <laughs> In 1819, the first dinosaur fossil was discovered and categorized quite well as an ancient reptile by fossil hunter William Buckland. It is important to note that dinosaur fossils had been unearthed before, but never fully categorized, and their discovery led to pretty much nothing scientific. The classification in more modernized sciences of the late 19th century led to the boom of knowledge that was these ancient creatures. With this expanding interest in these newly found beasts, by the 1870s, scientists and scholars were eager to learn more which brings us to Edward Drinker Cope of the Academy of Natural Sciences and Othniel Charles Marsh of Yale. These two men were hell-bent on discovering more fossils, and their quest for discovery led them to a bitter rivalry. Both men had extremely deep pockets and outreaching connections that allowed them to hunt down these fossils in a staggering speed, as they were trying to discover more species than the other, which coined the race for these fossils, the Bone War. In 1877, during the heat of the Bone Wars, Marsh discovered a brand new sauropod, the Apatosaurus, which he quickly wrote down and described as a long-necked creature who fed on leaves. The skeleton and fossils Marsh was working off of was essentially nothing. The feud was extremely heated at this point, and categorizing was not important to either Marsh or Cope. All the so-called paleontologist Marsh had was a few vertebrae and some pieces of the creature's pelvis. In 1879, Marsh discovered another sauropod, the Brontosaurus. The dinosaur was, of course, quickly described with very little evidence, but by 1883, more of the Brontosaurus had been unearthed, being one of the most complete sauropod skeletons we have. But it came with a catch. In 1903, paleontologist Elmer Riggs, who was a real and scientific paleontologist, who first discovered the Brachiosaurus early in 1903. So if anyone could talk sauropods, it was Riggs. Riggs disputed Marsh's claims of having found two separate dinosaur species. He pointed out that the Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus crossed over and belonged to one genus, not two. The first name was chosen and was given to classify the dinosaur, giving birth to the true dinosaur that had been discovered, the Apatosaurus, effectively erasing the term Thunder Lizard or Brontosaurus from any scientific texts. To add even more insult to injury to the now dead Marsh, it was also found that part of the Apatosaurus skull that Marsh believed was a Brontosaurus skull that he had pieced together was actually not even part of an Apatosaurus skull, but an entirely different sauropod named the Camarasaurus, something that wasn't fully proven until the 1970s.
So if it's been over 100 years since the Brontosaurus has been extinct from the science world, why is the species, practically made up by an armchair paleontologist, so culturally loved and important? To put it bluntly, Riggs' journal was largely ignored by the museums. Other paleontologists acknowledge the difference, but museums like the American Museum of Natural History, the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, and Riggs' hometown in Chicago, the Field Museum, continued to use the name Brontosaurus. This seems very negligent on the museum's behalf, but the reasoning was that they didn't have the proper skull to appoint to the Apatosaurus. But that did change by 1979, when a correct Apatosaurus skull was found and they removed the Camarasaurus skull. The Brontosaurus being renamed all the way back in 1903 caused a lot of attention toward the dino, sparking its birth and its run as one of the most iconic dinosaurs of all time. One of the first animated films, Gertie the Dinosaur, featured a cartoonish looking Brontosaurus as its main focus. Of course, the 20s and 30s brought dinosaurs to life with stop motion in films like The Lost World and King Kong, which both heavily showed off the might and awe of the Brontosaurus. The King Kong depiction of the Brontosaurus is also notable for fooling millions, as it has been used in Loch Ness Monster sightings for years. The ancient thunder lizard not only became a household name through movies, but in marketing as well, being the signature mascot for Sinclair Oil. The Bronto actually beat out multiple dinosaur mascots, as it proved to be the most popular. If the Sinclair logo looks familiar, but the name doesn't quite match up, the fictional oil company, Dynaco, used in many Pixar films, is a direct homage to Sinclair, which did use a Brontosaurus, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and a Stegosaurus. The most famous of the Brontosaurus' appearance for the more modern age is the Land Before Time, whose main character is a young Brontosaurus on a quest to find the rest of his species. Our story isn't over just yet either. As of 2015, there was a push to reinstate the famous dino back into the scientific conversation. In a recent study, it was found that the Apatosaurus and the Brontosaurus actually have less in common than previously thought. The Brontosaurus' neck was higher and less stocky than the Apatosaurus. This research was nearly impossible to conduct even 15 years ago according to Emmanuel Schopp, the head paleontologist at the New University of Lisbon, the man who spearheaded the extensive research on the sauropods. This research is incredible, and brings the Brontosaurus back to life. There are a few who disagree with the findings, namely Kenneth Carpenter. Carpenter is the curator and director of Utah State's Eastern Prehistoric Museum, and although he finds the sauropod research exciting and still groundbreaking, he notes that the base of our knowledge on the Apatosaurus isn't the best regardless, so comparing that to a Brontosaurus is not really a fair shot, stating, I think the verdict is still out. As of 2022, there has been nothing from our ancient long-necked friend in terms of research. I'm certain one day soon we could get some empirical evidence granting the Brontosaurus its rightful place in science, or the opposite, and dooming the unfortunate sauropod to its third extinction. This all started over two men who weren't careful enough, or didn't care enough to be careful. Motivated not by science and discovery, but fame and fortune. On their crusade to outfossil the other, Edward Drinker Cope discovered nearly 55 dinos, while Othniel Charles Marsh discovered around 80. Between the two, some of the most famous dinosaurs we know and love were found by them. Marsh holds the title of not only finding more, but some that have risen in popularity over the years, but he couldn't have known that. Marsh discovered the Allosaurus, Triceratops, Apatosaurus, and yes of course, the elusive Brontosaurus. Cope discovered the Champsosaurus, Lystrosaurus, and the Amphicolaeus, one of the largest dinosaurs to have ever been unearthed. Between them, around 130 new dinosaurs were discovered from 1872 to 1892. They fought a petty war for increasingly pettier reasons as the years went on. They both were barely even paleontologists, just men with loads of cash who knew where to point for other people to start digging. But they claimed they did it in the name of science at the end of the day. We are still feeling the wrath of their unorthodox tactics when it comes to their signature brand of paleontology, still debating and trying to decipher the true origin and existence of the Brontosaurus. To be fair, without their rivalry, we could have been set back decades in our knowledge on these prehistoric beasts. And as bad of scientists as they were, they truly paved the way for our modern understanding of dinosaurs. 
Sure, they didn't do a great job cataloging or putting any real science behind their discoveries, but they did discover so much. And although we are still undoing a lot of their past mistakes, without them, we wouldn't have what we have today. In theory, no Bone Wars, no Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, which is enough to keep me up at night. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. If you like the channel, make sure to check out our social medias in the description below. Make sure to stop by our Discord, it's the best place to chat with us and hang with fellow debunk enthusiasts. Of course, if you'd like to support the channel, please head over to our Patreon, Debunk Plus. Only a dollar a month and you guys get access to videos early, script PDFs, whatever random stuff we decide to put up, and more. As always, my name is Seth from Debunk File. See you guys next time. Bye.